Hi. Hello there. I'm Wendy. I'm Mo. And we're having a sex, sex talk. talk. Sex talk. So today we're going to talk about coming or not coming. To come or not to come. To come or not to come. Do you have to come? Do I have to come? No. You don't have to. You don't have to. Do you want to? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> coming should be fun. Coming should be fun. Yeah. Coming happens when you're having fun or when you're relaxed when you're enjoying yourself, when you're in the moment. Sometimes when you try to force it, it doesn't happen. Yeah, what if you're enjoying yourself and it doesn't happen? Then and you're then... allowed to not come. Yeah. So I think that um, in our society, there's a lot of pressure to orgasm. We come from a very like penis-centric world, right, where it's really like orgasm and ejaculation focused, but not everyone has a penis, as you know. And so what happens, I think, when we get too focused on orgasm, we sort of lose the pleasure and the joy of sex and sensuality and each other's bodies. Right said. Right said. Yeah, because if you're enjoying someone or some people, mm -hmm. you, you know, you shouldn't have to feel like you need to show appreciation by coming. Right, because that becomes that makes the the act very goal oriented. Right. 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 And sex shouldn't be goal oriented because sex should be, well sex, I don't want to use the word should, mm -hmm. but like when we make sex goal oriented, that's when we take the fun out of it, take the pleasure out of it, take the joy out of it. Yeah, because then what are you paying attention to? Only coming. Yeah, right. There's so much more to sex than coming. So there's humor. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. laughing during sex can yeah. be fun. Yeah, there's kissing. There's all sorts of fun body parts that you can explore. Yeah, there's foreplay and I guess if you're not, you know, you're not thinking about coming, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but I think also for the person who is wondering maybe why isn't this person coming when I'm doing a certain something? Mm -hmm. Am I not doing it right or am I not uh, the person they want to be with or is there some kind of a mental block? Mm -hmm. Then it gets to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Which you are doing something that sh should be fun. I, I, I shouldn't say should either, but... Yeah. I shouldn't say should. I shouldn't so say many should. shoulds. <laughs> but, yes, I think the big picture is just to enjoy your partner or partners. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? I think, so one of the things that I hear so often is, my, I'm not pleasing my partner, my partner is not orgasming. And this idea that the orgasm is what makes sex successful, sex successful. So I, 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 the other day, this, this even happened to me in session, this couple said to me, well, we had successful sex one time this week, but they had actually like hooked up several times, but didn't orgasm oh. those times. Yeah. So and that's how they were counting success. Yeah. And so what ends up happening then is those other times that you're hooking up and enjoying each other, because you didn't come, you don't count it as sex, right? And then it's like, well, we only had sex once this week. As actually, it sounds like you guys hooked up a couple of times this week and you actually had sex three or four times. 
and they were all successful. Mm. If we measure success by orgasm, then we lose all of these other small, all the small wins, you know? And you can even can like look at those other times as foreplay because foreplay doesn't have to happen right before sex. Foreplay is always happening. That's, that is very insightful. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, you know, if you have like um, kissing one day, maybe you take, you know, a bath together another day, one day you, like you were saying, you make each other laugh and you're like naked or maybe you're not even naked, maybe you're just making each other laugh so hard and yeah. like saying really sweet things to each other, like that is a form of foreplay. Yeah, it's leading to openness and vulnerability and that's really... Um, what a relationship can be. And I didn't say should. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's something I was thinking of too, and sometimes um, if you're having sex with someone and you want to make yourself come, mm -hmm. the other person doesn't have to feel like they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. It might be that you feel so comfortable doing that with them, that that's a huge form of intimacy and a sign that they feel safe with you. Yeah, that's such a great point. Like, you know, so if your partner wants to like mutually masturbate and get themselves off, that's okay. Like, that's totally great. Like mutual masturbation is awesome. And mutual masturbation in and of itself, if you just do that as an act, it's like there's no fluid exchange. You're, you're sitting next to each other and you're both masturbating. Like that's sex too. Mm -hmm. you know honestly so and the other thing that reminds me of is like sex toys <laughs> some partners feel like if you bring a sex toy into the bedroom or into the into the sex play that it somehow means they're not providing enough stimulation they're not good enough as opposed to like it's a toy yeah and females to females feel that way too I mean I know because I'm a lesbian <laughs> And, you know, I love women. So anyway, yes, I like men too, but not right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cute. That was this can cute. happen also with women with, and women, you know, sometimes you don't want to use a certain sex toy and sometimes you do. And this can make the other person feel, well, you know, why did you want to bring that today? Isn't, aren't I, you know, Good wouldn't enough. it be fun just with me? And sometimes you have that intimacy where you can say, like, I just want to be with you right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, I feel more playful today, so let's use this. It's just a spectrum of playfulness. It is a spectrum of playfulness, exactly. But I do think that a lot of times with lesbians particularly, having, like, a sex toy that's phallus-shaped, even though it brings pleasure, there might be some political connotations to it where they feel like, well, why are we bringing this phallus into the bedroom? Right. It could be. It could so, be that way. I mean, I've heard that before. I've heard women say that, like, they would rather use their hands or they would rather use, you know, other types, uh, you know, mouth and whatever. But, like, but then again, there are a lot of, you know, lesbians or women that love women that also use penis-shaped dildos, phalluses, phallus-shaped vibrators. Um, so... Different women, different so women. Types different of toys. toys. Yeah. But, but a lot of times men feel like, well, I'm bringing the real thing, so why do you want to bring that, you know, pe mm. penis into the bedroom? They might like it too. They, that's the thing. Men do like it because a lot of men enjoy, you know, playing with a penis. They like it when their women peg them, you know, like she yeah. straps it on and then, um, you know, inserts from behind. Um, penetrates from behind. So yeah, there's lots of, a uh, lots of fun thing. Men, you can enjoy sex toys. Is my point. Yeah, and actually, you yes. don't need to come. Anybody, just enjoy it, and you don't have to worry. <laughs> just have fun with the thing. Yeah, just remember, sex is about fun. Sex is about pleasure. Intimacy, vulnerability. Yeah. Sharing the space. Sharing the space. And you don't have to come, and your partner doesn't have to come. Um, no pressure. 
take the pressure off the table. Enjoy it for what it is. And that was the sex, the sex talk. talk. Sex Talk.